Well, hello, hello. So recently, somebody asked me about what to do when their puppy gets all excited and is nipping and jumping and doing that kind of thing. So exactly what it reads is, uh, you may remember my dog, a large standard poodle, about 15 months old. He is extremely hard to calm down in the evening. Uh, spring has sprung, and yesterday evening, he was thrilled, chasing bunnies, barking at chipmunks, and birds in the backyard. He never jumps the fence. That's good. He came in nipping and jumping and was extremely hard to calm down. What's your best advice? P.S. Nipping has gotten better during the day, but he still loses it when he's so stimulated. So let me show you. Uh, I got a puppy right here. And it used to be pretty excitable and crazy-like. But one of the tricks to helping this type of situation is rewarding the calm state of mind. So I'm constantly rewarding him for being calm. Now, it sounds a little crazy, but a lot of people actually will reward their dog for being excited. I know. I don't know why someone would do that. It's weird. Well, actually, I know exactly why someone would do it, because I used to do it myself until I realized why it wasn't equaling out toward the benefit and goal that I wanted to create, which was a calm, non-nippy, non-jumping-all-over-me kind of doggy that I could cuddle and hug and do stuff like that with and uh, not get bit and nipped or jumped on. So anyway, the way we do this is instead of getting our gratification from the dog being excited because oftentimes we associate a dog's excitement with them being happy. So when we see them all excited and their tails wagging, wagging, you know, it's like, woo, going all fast and stuff. The dog's like um, super excited. And we're like, that dog's happy. So absolutely, um, let's share in that love. Where for me, if I see that the dog's getting like too excitable, that's where I might back off, especially if it's not for anything other than just saying hello. So when that happens, we're excited to see our dogs are jumping all over us or getting excited and we're feeding into it. Hey, another place someone will do it is when they go to walk their dogs. You're like, come on, are you ready to go for a walk? Walkie, walkie. Uh, other places people do it is over treats, like you want a treat, but it's like we get so excited with our dogs, then they reflect that excitement back to us. So one of the things I practice doing is just being calm and just sitting with a puppy and hanging out with them or having them stay next to me and walk when I walk, but not pulling on a leash. And then what happens is the puppy starts realizing or dog that being calm is the way to go. See, dogs are designed to sleep at least 12 hours a day, right? And they just sleep a little bit more than us. But sometimes a dog stays awake for their human's cycle of sleep and being awakeness. I probably said that really weird. But what I'm getting at is our dogs kind of require or typically will sleep more than us unless we're not giving them a chance to because we keep feeding that brain, be excited. So what happens is when you start teaching your dog, you get love when you're calm. It's cool to be calm. Then they start reflecting the calm back to us. But part of it is we need to be calm for them. Because if we're like this all the time, ah, you know, then the dog kind of starts to do that. Now, in even absence of us feeding in too much to their excitement, sometimes we're not feeding enough of their confidence to be calm. So for me, every time I see them relax, I'm going to reward. So what might that look like? They sit, okay, reward. But then where would the next reward come? They start to down. Where would the next reward come? They kind of like pancake their heads to the ground. Where would the next reward come? Maybe they fall over to their sides and fall asleep. Like, okay. Uh, maybe I won't reward then. I'll wait for them to wake up. Well, you got to be careful there if they wake up and get too excited. But what I'm getting at is you want to reward progressively so your dog's so calm and they keep getting calmer until eventually they're sleeping. 
And so oftentimes what happens is when we train a dog, at least the way I do it, when we're not interacting with them, they're typically just hanging out, being good. At least that's the idea. So instead of us trying to chase them around the house as they're stealing our stuff or jumping and stealing stuff from the counters or barking at the windows or doing all these crazy puppy things, instead they're just hanging out, being cool, waiting for our next command. Or what I like to call charging the battery. So it's like they work a little bit, starts to deplete the battery, so they fall asleep a little bit, starts to give them some juice, and then they can cruise a little bit. But the idea is we're looking to always keep that battery away from 100%. Because when they have that 100% energy, well, yeah, they're going to jump, nip, and kind of go nuts unless we start to create things for them to do that may involve being calm or may even involve being excited, but just not... Uh, taking it out on us, not jumping and nipping and doing all that crazy stuff. It might look like, hey, go chase this toy, or hey, let's play a little tug of war, or hey, let's play a little hide and seek, or hey, how about you go find the buried treasure, or hey, you know, we can, we can start thinking of different games we can play with our dogs that will help wear them out so that they're not coming in and jumping and going nuts. So uh, another one, just looking at this, Again, when I look at he was thrilled chasing bunnies, barkings, and chipmunks and birds, and he comes in nipping and jumping. Well, yeah, because he was just out there expressing himself, chasing chipmunks and barking and doing all that kind of crazy stuff. So for me, this is me personally, if I see them doing that, I'll redirect. Hey, or actually I might interrupt, and then redirect. But I'm like, hey, let's do this instead. Let's not chase creatures because what could that lead to you uh, maybe you chasing someone's cat down and i might not want that or what might that lead to you know barking at stuff well now you have this uncontrollable barking problem anytime something's moving fast or geez uh or now you start guarding my territory instead of just from chipmunks and birds now you're actually protecting my yard from people that i want working at my house that now i have to put you up because you won't be good and that makes things bad. Ah, so a big part of this is kind of interrupting that stuff, especially before they come in. Because if they're all crazy outside and you let them in, they're going to be all crazy inside too, typically. So what I might do is take that dog for a walk first. Calm that little bugger down, right? Especially if you're not going to interrupt the chasing of the critters and the barking. Okay, if that's what you want to do to let your dog have a good time, not that I necessarily think it's a great idea, but if that's what you want to do, then when you, uh, before you bring the dog in, maybe take that dog for a joy ride or a joy walk or something that's going to calm that dog down or play a little games with some structure. See, a lot of times people play games and there's no structure. They just throw the toy, the dog brings the toy. Dog drops the toy, dog barks at human. Human tries to grab toy, dog steals toy. And that's kind of how the games get played. But what could work out a lot better than that is you're using a little bit of that what do we call it? Obedience in the mix there. So when the dog uh, wants to, let's say, get the toy, you might ask the dog to bark, then ask the dog to be quiet, then ask him to bark, then quiet, then bark, then quiet, then get the toy, right? So now you're in control of that barking. What's another good one? That dog brings that toy back. You say, leave it and back up, dog, stay. So that way you can get the toy without them stealing it. That's some good obedience. Then you can tell the dog down. The dog downs. You go, okay, doggy, throw the little toy. But now what's happened is you're in control outside. So when you come in, you're more likely to be in control inside. Another thing, though, that I strongly suggest is leashing that dog. I mean, a lot of people don't do that. I'm not sure if you are or not. I can't tell by the question here, which is why I recommend for everyone to join Canine Connect 360. If you want to go deeper, you can find that at askjtdt.com forward slash capital CC. 360. Boy, is it going to be bad if I ever actually get the domain Canaan Connect 360? Because then all these videos and stuff I've made with the 40 slash URL thingy wouldn't necessarily uh, work unless I bought that too and did like a forward slash redirect to whatever. Uh, what I'm getting at is you should join. It's really awesome. And then we're able to like get like real feedback and ask questions and get answers a lot quicker and stuff like that. But anyhow, uh, when we're looking at this kind of thing, 
we really want to bring that dog in on the leash until they calm down. Because once you bring them in and then they're calm, well, now you can take the leash off or at least let the leash drag if you're not going to take it all the way off. But a lot of times people might have the dog leashed outside or not, but then they bring the dog in and it's completely unleashed. And it's just running a wreck through the house, jumping and nipping. But if you had that leash, you at least have a little bit of control, right? And if you can use the leash properly, you can definitely stop the nipping and jumping on you. Uh, worst thing that's going to happen is the dog's going to bite the leash, right? And there's tons of ways we can deal with that. But back to this whole how to calm the dog down in the evening thing. Uh, I like using the treadmill. I'm a firm believer in that treadmill. So we uh, have different classes we offer. And uh, we even have an online course where we help teach people how to teach their dogs to run on that treadmill. But that's something we do to help keep the dogs extremely calm. Why? Because they can't nip and jump on you while they're running on the treadmill. And then when they come off, they've drained some of that energy and that battery of theirs. And then they're not going to be as likely to go uh, thundering through the house and doing crazy stuff. Really works out. So what's another one? I mean, just a classic is a go to your place command. So it's like when the dog comes in, I'm like, go to your place. Now, you could do this with all positive reinforcement only, and it could be a real fun thing for your doggie. All right. You can also do it um, other ways, too. But I strongly suggest make it as positive as you possibly can and still get great results. So simply by having a little doggy bed and sticking that thing in front of you and that dog comes running to grab a snack or something, we just hold it and say, hey, good, go to your bed. And then, all right, free or whatever. And or, OK. And then you throw that snack. That dog gets in there and come running back. Well, come on, give me another one. And when they're on that bed, you're like, good, go to your bed or place. But you start to develop this place command so that before you know it, when that dog comes in from outside, they just go to that place and wait for their snack. Yeah, I know. It's sort of brilliant. I know. I know. You're going to pat me on the back? Am I going to pat me on the back? We're going to both pat me on the back? I mean, it just works out so well. So around these parts of town and our little boarding thing that we got going on, uh, when we let the dogs out at certain times of the day, when they come back in, they know it's feeding time. And they are like pretty apt to go in those kennels to get fed uh, because we don't let them all eat together. Uh, sometimes we do. But during the winter, typically, when it's like extremely cold, uh, we might come back in from the play and not do the whole crazy feeding thing outside. But when we're feeding them inside, they're racing to get to those kennels because they know the food's coming. And it becomes conditional because they're like, yep, we know when we're here, we're going to go do this, then we're going to do that. So it helps them knowing what to do. Now, our dogs start to create patterns around everything. So what they'll do is go, okay, I know I just had a lot of fun outside chasing chipmunks and barking and stuff. And now I'm coming in and I'm going to nip and jump on you because I am have I was having fun being crazy out there. I'm going to be crazy in here. Instead, you know, even if they were just cuckoo outside, well, now I'm coming in. I'm going to go sit on that bed and be calm because I know what's coming next bedtime or you know play the place command game it's really fun now eventually what you can do is instead of just tossing the little things for your dog to find you go hide them tell the dog stay and what that does is prolong the amount of time you have with that dog not being cuckoo and it calms them down even further and then as you release them to go find the stuff same thing they can't nip and jump on you if they're looking for the snacks you hid well by golly boys and girls I like the way that sounds. I think we're making some progress here. So these are the things that we want to do. Now, another good one to help calm a dog down is to literally help them in a down. So when you're just hanging around, help that dog to a down. And instead of just a sit stay, we'll do a down stay. And same thing with the place command. We have an assume down stay when we do the place. Maybe not at first. We'll let them slide with just being on the bed or down and on it. I mean, sitting on it, but we're looking eventually for them to down on that thing. Because when a dog's in a down, they're less likely to clown around. I mean, some are real good at it, but I mean, if they're like in a real down, not like the kind where they're flopping around on their backs, all right? Now, listen here, young man, you got you to gotta look cute and stay on camera. Do you need a boost? You want to sit on my shoulder? I'm going to sit up here. Is this going to help? There. Okay. He's pretty calm. But <laughs> it wasn't like that to start. And you still need some work on that leash, so we're working through that. But the whole idea is you want to do things with them that are calming so that eventually you could do things with them that are completely wild and then not be the wild child back. More like the flower child, just hanging out, being good. I know. 
You can stiff my ear. It's fine. It's cool. You're cool, man. I like you. You're a good boy. So whenever we have a dog that's overly excited, oftentimes what I see is people are just getting way hype every time that dog's excited or they're trying to get that dog super excited. And then that leads to that dog being nuts. Another one is if the dog's practicing behaviors like chasing things and barking, and then you bring them into your house, they're probably going to jump and nip on you. So it might be best to like curb that completely or before you bring them in, calm them down outside before you even bring them in. To recap again, another good one is when you bring them in, just leash them right away. Now that at least stops the nipping and jumping. And then when they're calm, you can let the leash go or take it off. Yeah. Worst thing you got to deal with there is the leash biting. Uh, the treadmill, another great thing because if we get them cruising on that treadmill, they can't nip and jump and do that stuff. And then when they're off, they're more calm because we've drained some of that battery. Another good one is having them down so they can't clown around as you're hanging around, right? Something like that. And what's so cool about that is, hey, your dog sleeps or should be sleeping at least 12 hours. So it's like, why can't they just hang out with you a few hours a day, you know, or for an hour stretch? They could totally accomplish that. But make it fun. Give them some yum-yums when they're good. In fact, I'm going to try to hand this dude a yum-yum. Got a little bit of this cookie here. Let's see. Dog cookie from the bakery. It's organic. Hard to break, at least with one hand. You want that, dude? You can have that. Is it too much for you? You need me to hold it while you chew it? I'll hold it while you chew it. Yeah. You want me to just give it to you later? It looks kind of big for you. Maybe I should try to break it. Here. See if I break you off a little piece. Oh, gosh. That thing is strong. All right. Is that the right size? This is probably still a little too big. But anyway, you get the idea. You want to give them something fun. I think I got a smaller snack here. That was probably not as good as the last one, huh? You're considering this one. Okay. You've licked it a little bit. Oh, gosh. Okay. Maybe not that one. Here's a bit of another snack. Okay, now we have full-fledged eating, folks. Full-fledged chewing. Look at it. Look at them go. Dude, you're chewing that snack. I gave that to you because you were calm. Not because you were going nuts. But a lot of people will feed the dog when it's going nuts as a way to help them get calm. And I get that. But if you can hold off till they're actually calm and help lead and direct that and teach them that not only do you love them, but they need to listen. And that's how they get the love. That, that's going to be a really good thing. Now, when I first got this little bugger, when I'd try to hold him on his back like this, it was a no-go. He was like, dude, uh-uh, don't do that to me. And now he's getting better at it. Why? Because we practice it. And what does practice make? Progress. Tell him, Maxie. Say, practice makes progress. Practice makes progress. And then you can dance with your dog other than them giving you the evil eye. They're not nipping or getting too excited. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, something in here uh, will make sense for you so that you'll be able to start getting the progress and the results that you want so you don't have to deal with the nip monster and a dog jumping and doing all that wild stuff, all right? So tell them bye, Maxie, and we'll talk to everyone later, huh? All right, dude. Okay, thanks for being so calm, by the way. You really kicked butt there. Good job, dude. Way to go.